Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, it, yeah. I mean, the way, the way the industry has, has been, you know, in, in one ways, um, you could have written all the songs. It came out, gone double platinum, and then you would, would be, the story would be, well, the managers stole all the money and the labels <laughs> so I left me penniless. And mm-hmm. or it's the case where, well, my album didn't come out, so I didn't have that they got me story to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, because either way, it just seems as if it's just never uh, it's just not been easy for black RB artists, artists mm-hmm. to have a fair shot. So either like your case where you had, you know, your two two main albums that you worked on mm-hmm. never really got pushed out or promoted and you have others who as i said went double platinum and they didn't see the money because it went it went in a different direction um and it's interesting that now you're saying that with the more with the independence that's available there are more avenues for artists to try and make a living out of it and Mm -hmm. and have more protection over their art and i guess it's just trying to get a generation of people to sort of understand the things a little bit different because you know it's either you just go into shows hoping that people download a stream yeah but um those two are, are, are not enough so you have to unless you do loads of shows and you're mm-hmm. getting a viral a viral song you, you mm-hmm. do need to find something that is a little bit more um a little bit more uh yeah a well balanced as, as well um but i guess it's you know it's it's going to take us understanding what you know how how does whole nft stuff works i mean is it that you you is it like a share you buy into it and hope yeah. that it, it 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 increases in value it, it absolutely so uh, uh basically again from what i've learned so far so they, some people call the purchase of them a mint m i n t mm. um and again on infinity's website they actually break everything down for you. What is an NFT? There's even frequently asked questions. So kind of going back to your question, it's, it's pretty much just that. So like, you know, if you invest in a stock or something like that, you put your money in there and you, you watch what it does. You know, Mm. the thing about it is um, like whatever you buy into it, it's not going to drop. That's the thing that I do like. So I'm going to give you an example. So when my, uh, me and the leftovers, um, it's out right now on Infanity's site. It started at like four ninety nine. Within a matter of three days, it went up to nine ninety nine. So those who pur- purchased it at four ninety nine, if they wanted to sell it to someone, they can oh. sell it for nine ninety nine. And that's basically how you know stocks pretty much work. Uh, work. You know, you can sell it to someone else. And so we're able to you know um, see how many are being sold. I don't know who purchased. I mean, the owners may know that, of course. But mm. as far as me with my account. I'm able to see like how many are being sold. So we're praying, you know, that we uh, can go ahead and, you know, sell this out. And then the the higher the demand, of course, the price will go up. So again, the idea of this uh, NFT and or collectible is it's, it's, you own that. So if you purchase that collectible uh, of the leftovers featuring Gina Thompson, you, you own that. But in addition to owning that, you have other special perks. So anything new that comes out with me or you're like the first to know everything that that's about about me and the first that can have access to any of my stuff before anyone else does or before anybody else can get it. Mm-hmm. And then there's and, and there's a number of things like there there'll be like meet and greets and people may have the um, um, option to be able to, you know, request a meet and greet before the next person may. And I even plan on um getting into the clothing line so okay. again it's going to be one of those things i just kind of got solidified my uh, my my um my logo so i do plan on you know eventually again in time you know doing things where i can you know sell my product and again it, it'll be like a brand uh here's another example i was just told uh not just told but i know that there is a rap artist and i keep saying that i'm going to refresh my memory or find out exactly who it was that I was told that I don't know if it's a group or what I don't know if it was Wu-Tang some some rap artists or group they um actually had jumped into to the NFT and it was it was such a demand for one of their older older albums like someone actually paid I think like a million dollars I think that's I know that's the story was something like that and I'm just not sure which rap group it was so i know you would tang had an album which they recorded and somebody bought, bought it for a million and never got released so they oh, something they said, like 
Yeah, so yeah, I don't have so, all the yeah. details, but the yeah. bottom line is because that's what it was worth, and that person actually was willing to pay that. Like someone that had the album probably had whatever they whatever they paid for it, and someone was willing to spend that to get mm. that. Now, don't get me wrong, I you know that's a lot. You know yeah. that was a story that I was shared, but let's just say for, let's just say if our collectible leftovers and myself are collectible, let's say the price goes up to twenty dollars. Like I said, you know. Um, I purchased one, of course, to support ourselves for four ninety nine. But it's already and that three days later was ten bucks. So now, if anybody wants it, if we sell out, of course, I can sell it for whatever it is. Now, trust me, by the time it does sell out, because I'm claiming it, the time that it does sell out, I can see the price being up there, and then you know we can you can either hold on to it just like a stock, or mm -hmm. you can sell it. So that's what I love. It's pretty much you're like investing into you're believing you're investing in the leftovers and Gina Thompson. And of course, you know, in Fanity as well. And people will see that you can actually you don't need a company to start an NFT. You really don't. But you but 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 it's it's good to be with someone until you pretty much learn, you know, enough that you can learn. Like Infinity mm. is just Infinity is just phenomenal. They're just they're a phenomenal company. Um, they're doing big things and I see a lot of great things happening for them, but I have seen other artists and other people do their own NFTs, you know, okay. so. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned Manifa and that when we had our, I interviewed her, she spoke about NFTs and stuff. And I'm like, man, I have no idea. What she had yeah. She was so passionate about it. I'm thinking, wow. So there's a, there's a generation of people that are really understanding what it is and really pushing it mm -hmm. and, and and it's good to be um on on top of these things because um you know conventional putting money in the savings account doesn't always work and and yeah. especially where we're in a digital world where um you can download an entire album without paying for it um yeah. it, it's like well how are artists and creators going to be uh, protected um if if there aren't other avenues like that Mm -hmm. Um. So, but as I said, when you if we were to see you doing shows, mm -hmm. are you relying on, on on backing tracks, or are you do you focus on you know at least even if I had just a a, a, a guitarist um mm -hmm. along the road or with me, that's at least I want to give a different type of show. What well, what's what is it that you? I mean, what how 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 does it? What's the Gina Thompson show looking like now? So basically, um, it kind of goes back to the type of venue one and the type of show that it is. Because if I'm going to do a, a club, let's just hypothetically say okay. a club, I'm probably not going to have a band. It probably would be maybe a couple dancers and myself. It all depends on, the for the most part, the venue. Now, if you're going to do like a, a summit or, or, you know, a big festival or something like that, you know, I will have a band. You know, like I said, there there is access to a band. So depending on what that show is and mm. what's expected, you know, and now if it's a concert concert, of course, it's going to be a band. I'm not going to be on stage for 30, <laughs> 40 minutes with a, with a track, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but so, yeah, so I, I'm going to be doing both. So uh, hopefully I answered that question. Okay. For you. Yeah. What about the, so you, the dancers, do you have a group of dancers that you, that just wait or do you just hire dancers for the show or? Well, so we're in the process of looking for dancers mm -hmm. um, and we actually got a couple of things put into place. So now we're just kind of going to work on putting the entire show together. Um, and these dancers, you know, depending, will be the ones that will be traveling. Sometimes things change and you may have to change your dancers. Yeah. But for now, I'm, I would like the consistency and the continu and our continuity you know, to have the same one. So I was introduced to a dancer at my um, video shoot for the Infanity remix of The Things You Do. Yeah. Um, and then they sent me um, a, a snippet, if you will, of her and someone else. So right now, you know, we're, we're, we're going to start with probably two at the most four dancers. And then we may do um, and, a, and a couple background singers. We'll see. Again, depending on the venue. Um the stage may not be enough room for two singers <laughs> and two background singers. So, but it's always good to be able to have them know yeah. that they're there. So if the venue permits or the situation permits for a full band and the whole shebang, that we have them. 
as we're talking about this, I don't know if you remember when you sang the things you do on the BT. I think is it Teen Summit? Yeah, yeah, your two dancers. <laughs> yeah, with my little short hair. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. remember that? Uh huh. I do remember. I think that someone had actually even tagged me on my <laughs> IG page with that. I so remember. I was like, "Woo, them was the days." All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Halftime Chat community. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member as a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind the scenes stuff and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat. <laughs>